Hello. Welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica, California. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor here at Mount Olive, and we're so glad you've joined us from worship on this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for Christ's sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you all the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no shadows can overcome. Stay with us now within this season As the daylight hours are fading Let your light break through the shadows And shine within your people here Joyous light of heavenly glory Loving love of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as winter wraps around us, we shall raise our song to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. Stars that grace the darkness in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms a weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us.
presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and light of all creation. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we, we, bear, we may bear your redeeming love to all the world, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we light this fourth candle of the wreath, we pray. Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love. That our faith shine ever new and our lives reveal your light. Good morning, friends. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. We are in the fourth week of Advent, and the color is blue. The color of hope has our hearts overfill with the hope of the coming of Christ. Let's listen to today's story. Whoosh! Who was that? Mary jumped in surprise and tried to hide. She was expecting Joseph to visit her to talk about their wedding. But it wasn't Joseph. It was an angel named Gabriel with a message from God. Don't be afraid, Gabriel announced. I have good news for you. You will have a baby. His name will be Jesus. He will be your son, but he will also be God's son. How is this possible, Mary asked. Gabriel answered her. The Holy Spirit makes all things possible. Your child will be holy, the Messiah, the Savior for God's people. Mary was scared but excited too. She took a deep breath and stood up tall. Here I am, she said. I will love and care for God's son. Mary rushed to tell Joseph the news. Later, Joseph tossed and turned in his sleep. He was worried about Mary's news. Mary was going to have a baby, God's son. While Joseph slept, God sent Gabriel to bring him a message too. Don't be afraid, Gabriel said. God wants you to care for this baby. You will name him Jesus. He will be a descendant of King David, but he will also be a king for God's people. Joseph woke up amazed by his dream. Gabriel was gone, but he remembered the good news. Soon he and Mary would be married. Together they would love and care for God's own son. Mary hummed as she walked to her cousin's house. She was excited to share the good news with Elizabeth. Mary was going to have a baby, not just any baby, God's son, Jesus. Mary stood outside at Elizabeth's house. Knock, knock, knock. She opened the door. Elizabeth's belly was big and round. Even though she was much older than Mary, God had blessed her with a child too. Surprise, Mary sang. Elizabeth wrapped her arms around Mary. You are blessed, Elizabeth exclaimed. You will be the mother of God's son. When I heard your voice, my baby jumped for joy inside of me. You are blessed because you heard God's words and believed. Mary was filled with joy. She took a deep breath and sang a beautiful song of praise to God. Day after day, year after year, God is good, oh so good. God is always good. God is doing amazing things, and I am blessed indeed. Day after day, year after year, God fills us with good things. God's love is wild and fierce. God is turning the world upside down, and so I dance and sing. Let us, like Mary, be filled with joy and hope. Let our scared hearts open up and be filled with the Holy Spirit 
as we prepare for the coming of Christ. Let us shout that Jesus is coming to save the world. A little baby is coming. Say a prayer with me, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for Mary and that she was brave enough to carry the Christ child, to let the Holy Spirit into her heart and change her life and make her an instrument for God's joy and love. Let us be like her and let us shout out God's love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first lesson is written in the seventh chapter of 2 Samuel, beginning at the first verse. Now, when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over the people of Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all of your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I, and I will give you rest from all your enemies, moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the 16th chapter of Romans, beginning at the 25th verse. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was keep, kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. This virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. So the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there, of that kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this sixth month for her, this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. The Advent and Christmas seasons remind us of angels. In today's Gospel lesson, this fourth and final Advent Sunday, an angel is the first to announce God's plan to a young and quite bewildered Mary. We also remember that an angel commanded Joseph not to change his wedding plans, and how a whole host of angels came down to a straggly band of smelly shepherds that first Christmas, singing alleluias and heavenly hymns, telling those shepherds to hurry to Bethlehem. If you take the events of Advent and Christmas seriously, you cannot help but be surrounded by the voices of angels. Well, it's 2020, and wouldn't it be grand to hear some angels this year? With so many angels in the Bible text during this season, it seems to me there, there ought to be some around for us to hear. Or is it just possible that our doubts and our skepticism and our fears and our worries and our logic and our reasoning and even our self-assurance and pride, pride all these things have kept the angels out of our lives? And maybe deep down, we only believe that Mary and Joseph and the shepherds imagined they heard those angel voices. Or maybe we become convinced, when we bother to think about it at all, that angels like dinosaurs have become extinct. No angels? Well, if that were the case, it certainly would help explain all the problems of 2020. Or maybe with all the wars and racial injustice and environmental degradation that we humans have brought upon the world and ourselves, maybe the angels have just been scared away. So all this is to say that there are times like today when it seems hard to hear the voices of the angels. Or we've, maybe we've just lost our ability to hear them. And maybe we've missed the song of angels because we've looked at all those wrong places. There are, of course, places in this world where it would be very difficult to hear angel voices, no matter how hard you try. Not sure if I've ever heard the voices of angels while driving along the 405 or the 101 at rush hour. And I was recently in the uh, Santa Monica Post Office where one customer was taking all of his COVID-19 frustrations out on the post office staff. Let me tell you, it would have been hard to hear the angels sing in that place on that day. And then there is the cruel rhetoric of this year's political campaign. No angels singing there. On the night of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, I bet there are a lot of parties going on. After all, the city was full of visitors. They were coming there for the census. They were tired from traveling, and they needed to eat, and they were probably ready to party. But it's interesting, there's no record anywhere that those people heard the voices of angels that night. The angels were more interested in the faith 
of, and those humble shepherds. And I have a feeling that the angels wouldn't care too much for our normal Christmas hustle and bustle. Could it be that unless our celebration goes beyond the gifts, the package, the, the mailings, the rushing, even the cooking and baking, that unless we get beyond these, we will not be able to hear the angels sing? So let's look again at the times when we have heard about angels. In today's Gospel lesson, we hear Mary, a simple and devout young woman as you could find, radiant in anticipation of the greatest moment coming in her young life. I'm sure she prayed long and hard for the blessings of God, and like any expectant mother, she must have had some long, hard thoughts about it all, wondering about her child's destiny, perhaps in the quiet moments of her thoughts. Perhaps then Mary heard the angel voices. And then there's those shepherds. There they were, out in the fields alone, going about their business as usual, watching their sheep at night. Imagine the times when you've been out in the night looking at the stars on a warm Sunday night. Perhaps something of the stillness of that starry night, the silence. Think of those shepherds then in the dark with their dogs beside them, the conversation slowing until each man deep in his own thoughts sits watching the dying embers of their fire. Here were simple, devout men, people who had waited and prayed an incredibly long time for a savior. And now that night, as they had done so many nights previously, they were probably thinking about that again. They were certainly not rushing about, <laughs> madly taking care of Christmas details. I would guess that they might have been thinking about the meaning of it all, wondering if the God who put the stars in the sky really did care about them, if there was any meaning to all the human suffering around them, and if the Messiah would ever come. There was no way the shepherds could have imagined all the glory that was about to surround them that night. But suddenly, there it was, unexpectedly, almost frighteningly so. Unexpectedly, there appeared an angel of the Lord. Fear not, said the angel. I have come to, with an answer to your thoughts, your worries, your vulnerabilities. I have good news to, for you. Unto you is born this day a Savior. God cares about you. There is meaning in life, and you will find that meaning when you come to see this baby who has been born. And then we come to today. Christmas 2020, how can we find time to hear the angels sing? A time for quiet contemplation when our hearts and lives can hear the voice of God speaking? That moment when it's possible for us to hear the angels sing just as those shepherds heard them in the hills of Bethlehem, just as Mary heard the angels speak in the quietness of her solitude. That is where the angels speak and sing. There's no record in the Bible or any other history that the busy crowd in Bethlehem or the Caesars on their thrones in Rome heard or saw anything out of the ordinary that night. Through the centuries since that time, there have been others, many others, who have been able to hear the angels speak and sing. And as Christians, we believe that today, 2020, there are still angels, angels still bending near, to, to, bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. And so, Today, in the midst of these most anxious times, how do we, you and I, hear the angels sing in 2020? Well, if you have children, I think you really already know the answer, or, or should know the answer. Tonight, when you put your children to bed and tuck them in, look down at their peaceful, innocent, hopeful faces, and think long and hard about the great thing God has done for you in giving you this child, these children to love and care for, to raise up in the Lord. Look hard, listen closely, and yes, you may even hear the angels sing. Or if you're alone, as so many of us are and will be this safe at home Christmas, if you're alone, take some time to sit and read the Christmas story again. That exciting, thrilling story of angels and Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. And don't look for explanations or logic in the mysteries of this event. Just see in it the beauty and wonder of simple people who've come to realize what it means that God has spoken to God's world through the coming of a Christ child. And as you read, listen closely, you may also hear the angels sing. Or even in these very difficult times, take time to remember the God who's given you your family, your friends, your loved ones, your own life. If you are married and with your spouse, hold hands a while and remember again the promises you made on your wedding day. Listen closely, you may even hear the angels sing. 
Now, I can't draw you a picture of angels. I cannot write down the music of the angel's song for you. I can only say what I believe an angel is like. And that simply is this. Angels are a way we describe what cannot be described. Those incredible spiritual experiences when somehow we become aware of some message that God wants us to know. As Advent draws to a close and Christmas approaches, listen, we, you and I, can still hear the angels sing. Amen. from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God. Let us confess our faith using the words we know as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, after each prayer petition, I will say, Hear us, O God, and then we will all say together, Your mercy is great. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Among these are St. Paul's Lutheran Church, the Santa Monica Baha'i Community, Beth Shear Shalom Synagogue, St. Monica's Roman Catholic Community, the Church in Ocean Park, 
The Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, Santa Monica, Calvary Baptist Church, St. Augustine by the Sea Episcopal Church, and First AME Church of Santa Monica. Inspire the faith of their people, cultivate understanding among us, and strengthen us in love and service to your, our community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend to them. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, spirit with your tender presence, especially all those suffering with COVID-19 and their families. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Once again, thank you for joining us here for worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica, California. Our weekly schedule during these Safer at Home days continues. Each week, we provide a pre-recorded worship service for you for that Sunday. We do this, we announce this on a Saturday in an email I send to all the people for whom I have an email address. In that email, I give you the URL, the link to the worship service that you can watch anytime. And then I also invite you to a group of us who gather on Sunday morning around 9 a.m. our old worship time to watch the service together. If you'd like to do that, I list the uh, Zoom link for you to do that. If you're not on our email list and would like to get on that list, please send me an email to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org and I'll get you on the list. And we continue to have folks that help us with worship reading lessons, leading the prayers, sharing a passing of the peace wave. We could use some help with this, especially for the passing of the peace. We, if you'd like to help us with this, send me an email and we'll get you in the mix. Again, to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org. Now, I'd like to share with you our Christmas plans here in Mount Olive. Last Sunday, we released a new pre-recorded holiday jazz at home concert by Janice Anderson and Chris Dawson. You can find it on our YouTube page and also linked to our website. Now today, if you're watching this on Sunday, December 20th, today, in addition to this pre-recorded -re -pre worship service for the fourth Sunday in Advent, we will have a Mount Olive Community Gathering at 5 p.m. via Zoom, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Our Zoom gathering will conclude with communion in your home. Now, I've already shared more details on my, during my email message yesterday and also some, from some printed materials we mailed you. But if, you're, if you miss that information or your invitation, simply drop me a quick email again to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org. One thing I will tell you, though, for this community gathering that will end with communion is you'll need to be prepared for the communion at the end of the service with some bread and some wine or whatever you're going to use for bread and for the liquid. On Christmas Eve, this Thursday, we're planning a live 
drive-by portrayal of the Holy Family. From 2 to 3.30, you'll be able to drive through our parking lot and see one of three families with new babies costumed as Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. There'll be some music, and we're asking those to co who come to bring a donation from Mount Olive's new little pantry. We ask everyone to stay in their cars and wear a mask, but this could be quite fun and maybe even meaningful. We're also planning a special pre-recorded Christmas Eve worship service, and it'll be available anytime on Christmas Eve day that you can watch that day or any time afterward. We'll be sending you a link for that service on Christmas Eve day. And while you're able to view that service anytime, again, a group of us will gather at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve to watch the service together and have a little fellowship around it. In that same email I'll send out Christmas Eve, I'll have the link to the service and the link to the Zoom group that will watch the service together at 6 p.m. And then next Sunday, December 27th, we'll offer a pre-recorded service of Lessons and Carols, available for your viewing on Saturday afternoon. You'll get the link in my weekly email. Once again, I want to thank you for your prayers and financial support of our congregation, especially in these tough times. You can give to Mount Olive by check via the U.S. mail. Our mailing address is 1343 Ocean Park Boulevard, Santa Monica, California, 90405. If you, leave if you live locally, you can put your cash or check through the secure mail slot in our church office door. There are two ways you can give online, through our website, mtolivelutheranchurch.org. Look for the giving button, and from there you can give a gift by your credit card, your savings account, or your checking account. We also take guests through Ven gifts through Venmo, venmo.com slash mountolive. However we, you support us financially, we are so grateful. Thank you. For our thanksgiving for the word, after each paragraph, I will say, for your word of life, O God, and we'll all say together, we give you thanks and praise. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Now send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call upon you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray together the words we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, the creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.